One of the first things that needs to be done in Dynamic 3i before going into the distribution cycle, which is the standard order entry, shipping confirmation, and ultimately updating it to a receivable, is to have product uh, defined to the system in order to sell from an order entry perspective. So it's very simple in Dynamic 3i to set up an inventory item, and this is what I'd like to show uh, is the complete cycle for setting up an inventory item uh, product as defined to the company and then into the stock. Uh, there's a couple things we have to think about in setting up the product. There's a lot of defaults that would be predefined to the system, such as the general ledger and the, uh, the units of measure and everything like that and, and vendors and stuff like that. But essentially, we're... Um, um, very quickly, those are all uh, pre-set up, and you can actually enter a product, uh, and then we uh, assign it uh, to a stock location. And there's certain things that I'll point out that have to be done at that uh, at each individual step. In the inventory item, we will uh, set up a product file, which is globally defined to the company. And it's very simple. All they have to do is there's a lot of defaults here already pre-set up, which can be overridden. Um, but essentially, pick your product code of whatever that you're going to assign to it. Uh, I'll call it a uh, micro fiber cloth. And um, at this point, the cost center um, is... Uh, defaulted and predefined when we first came in. The product class and product groups are something that you have to think about as far as grouping your uh, classes and, and groups together from a from a, an inventory perspective and they can be overridden so we can just uh, basically assign this to a general class uh, and uh, a general sellable um, product group and at this point in time um, uh, basically Everything is, is taken care of. If I wanted to save that off, uh, that's how fast it is to actually enter in a, uh, a, a product and define it to Dynamic 3i. This, again, as I, I'll state, is defined globally to the company. So the next step that we want to do is take this product and give it uh, a, a warehouse location. Uh, Dynamic 3i is multi-warehouse, and at any individual location, a product can have certain attributes at a warehouse location. So we can actually do that directly from the product master maintenance instead of going back out to the menu. Simply call up the stock master, and it will uh, bring over all the pertinent information and allow you to start defining certain specifics uh, about that product uh, to a warehouse location. Uh, I can assign this product to any warehouse location that exists uh, in Dynamic 3i and that's been uh, predefined and what are or been defined. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign this particular product to the Toronto warehouse, uh, and then I can tell the system that at this warehouse location, it's uh, uh, it's a purchased item or a manufactured item or uh, whatever. Uh, there's all sorts of different product types in Dynamic 3i. And uh, just to give you uh, a look at what they are, um, a fabricated item, a feature, a kit, it uh, could be labor activity for our manufacturing, etc. Um, but for purposes of distribution, it's either a, it's, it's a purchased item. I purchase it in and then I would sell it out. Uh, when I choose that product type, and since it's a purchased item, I'm going to have to choose a prime vendor. This is the primary vendor that would supply me with this item. Uh, again, these are all uh, defined to uh, Dynamic 3i uh, on uh, other uh, maintenances. And I'm going to assign this particular uh, vendor um, or this particular product to be supplied by this uh, ATI vendor. Uh, other information uh, can be defaulted and, and for information only can be o totally overridden, um, such as the uh, warranty and parts and labor information, etc. And uh, as far as the system goes now, I can actually save the item uh, as far as the stock master is concerned. Uh, so that's how fast it is to assign the product that you defined to the stocking location and give it certain parameters. Now there's a lot of functionality that's also involved in order to uh, to do purchasing of that item and in order to actually uh, do selling and, pr and, and, and pricing. The next step is within the stocking location, we'll just go back to that stocking location, we have to, before we can carry any inventory of an item, have a cost associated to that because from the general ledger and financial perspective, we're going to ha carry a cost of that item. So I can't bring any inventory into uh, Dynamic 3i until I have cost defined uh, to, that, uh, to that item. So again, directly from the stock maintenance, I can go to the uh, cost information. And as you can see, there's, uh, this is my brand new product that we just set up. So there is no particular cost associated with it. Uh, I can directly go to the cost maintenance of this item and start for the warehouse location that I had, uh, create a cost record for my item that I, that I want to uh, uh, carry. 
Now, um, costs are set up in multi-currency, Dynamic 3i being multi-currency. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, a, a simple currency. Um, we will do Canadian dollars. And I'm going to give this particular item a uh, transfer price of, uh, I don't know, $5.35 um, with an exchange of one, it's five dollars and thirty-five cents in Canadian dollars, and the system will uh, give me a landed cost. And ultimately, down here, you'll see it's uh, uh, accumulating a standard cost uh, for the item. Uh, the effective date is it's effective today since it's the first time that it's going in, and I can save this uh, particular record to uh, to the uh, uh, to the cost. Now, within that cost maintenance. Um, once that is associated in a new cost, there's a process to actually update it. So before the actually item gets that update uh, in the um, into the cost record, I have to update that cost, and I can run that directly from this uh, update cost, which will transfer all the entries that I've just done there, the beginning and ending product uh, for a certain warehouse, being multi warehouse, and we'll actually just execute this and get that cost updated into that item, and the system will carry it through and uh, we will have a cost for that item once we go to the next step. One of the other things uh, actually once we once we finish sorry once we finish off that uh, product is before we can actually sell the product we ultimately have to have a price. Uh, if I go into order entry right now and try to sell this item there's no problem it's just going to have no default price to show up so I'm gonna have to actually enter in a price. So one of the things in the distribution is setting up a whole pricing thing for your inventory items. So after you give it a uh, uh, set it up as a product and an inventory item and give it an associated cost you can directly from the product file go into the pricing. And it's very simple to set up a pricing. Uh, it can be uh, at any level of customer, class, product, unit, or any combination as well, a customer group. The lowest level or the most, uh, the, the simplest level is just at the currency. So for uh, any uh, currency, which we're, we're dealing in, in Canadians there, so we'll deal with the Canadian currency. For this uh, currency, and for the product M3A, I'm going to associate it uh, a certain cost uh, to that. Canadian currency here. We will just pick the uh, Canadian dollars. And I'm going to associate um, a price for this item, M3A, and give it an effective date of... Uh, order to stock factor of one. The order unit of measure comes in as each. And we'll give it an effective date of today. Uh, and it's an amount. And we'll give it a list price of uh, a cost of 535. When we uh, sell this, we're going to sell it for uh, 795 Canadian. And uh, we will save that off to the system. And now we have basically all the steps required. We've set up the product. We've uh, defined it a warehouse location. And we've ultimately uh, given it a uh, cost for uh, carrying the inventory. And we've defined it uh, a price record uh, in the system. So this product is totally set up from an inventory perspective, from a product perspective, from an order entry distribution pricing, and uh, inventory perspective with respect to cost. And it's ready to go.